going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 194 of Lured Up, the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Tuesday, September 8th, 2021. I'm your host, Ken Pescator, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, yo, hello. Yo, ho, ho, Ken. And a bottle of rum. No, uh, a bottle of pineapple rum. Is that a thing? No. I just made it up. Or Nanab. Nanab you, rum. Yeah, I was going to say, if you needed, if you wanted some rum out of the pineapple, the Nanab, or the Raz variety, where would you go? I want golden Nanab. Raz. I want golden Raz rum. It's guaranteed to get you. <laughs> <laughs> but Adam, I do have another question for you. Yeah, and what's that? It's, uh, I wanted to know how your balls were doing. Um... I've got a few hundred of each. I honestly, I've taken the long way home, so I'm stocking up pretty heavily recently. I'm talking about your balls, balls. Oh, those balls! We have a new sponsor, Adam. Support for the Lured Up podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard it right, Adam, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping using the promo code BALLCHECK at manscaped.com. Huge shout out to Manscaped. They reached out. They wanted to partner up. We hooked it up. They sent both Adam and I a Lawnmower 4.0. I've uh, heard Manscaped on like a million other podcasts. I finally understand what the hype is all about. Adam, the the top of my head has no hair, right? Yeah. The rest of my body has lots of hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a much I'm, needed. I'm disgusting. So it's like <laughs> it's it's phenomenal, and not for nothing. the The last trimmer I used left both emotional and physical wounds on oh, my body. No. So now I'm like a pube trimming ninja. Oh yeah. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BALLCHECK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code BALLCHECK, B-A-L-L-C-H-E-C-K. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. All right, Adam, I think we can get into the show now. I'm all pretty, right, let's uh, go. I'm pretty excited about all this, but no, they're, 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 we are. We, look, this is a big deal for us. So this is the first time the show has been sponsored. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, support Manscaped to support us. I think this is a great opportunity to help, you know, launch our show into uh, financial prosperity. No, actually, it's a great way to keep the lights on. It's freaking awesome. So it's thank a great you, way to stay uh, to keep our hygiene. active. Uh, to, oh, to keep the hygiene. Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> hashtag ad. Better. Hashtag sponsored. But no, let, we're going to recap the last week of gameplay. I want to hear your hot take on the season of mischief. Oh, you'll get it. We had Incense Day. We had a Psychic Spectacular. Uh, in-person Safari Zones are coming back. And Adam, I believe you and I will be in Philly. Or will you be in Philly, Adam? I'm going to do my best. Fucking unacceptable. Uh, Niantic has published the 0.219 release notes, so we'll kind of run through all the different changes. We're going to poke the bear a little bit. We have the topic being our feelings on the announcements prior to September 1st and the September 1st announcement. We've had some time to sit with it. I want to know how everyone feels now that we've had that time. I'm very anxious to hear where you're at uh, now that you've had you know some time to digest, some time to play the game. I'm looking forward to it. But let's start with the Season of Mischief, our September event calendar. We had a lot going on. I always enjoy the first week of a new season because we typically have seven to ten days of vanilla spawns, right? You love them vanilla spawns. I do. I do. But here was a little bit different. We We had events within like the first five days, which is different than what they've done in the last two seasons. So we had five, you know, four days of vanilla spawns. Then we had on the fifth, we had the incense day uh, that brought in, uh, you know, the the different the different spawns. I'll get to that in a second. But the I don't know what vanilla stuff you've been seeing. I've been seeing bell sprout, machine alligator. Do I did catch a for alligator? I caught a like butterfree. I'm seeing in the wild butterfree breed drill. I'm like, yes, give me more of those candies. Yeah, evolved forms are always exciting in the wild, even if they are. Yeah, in that sweet, sweet stardust. Yeah, for sure, for sure. 
like I said, we're only, you know, as of this recording, we're a week and a day into the season, but we've already seen two events. We had Hoop is, like, like the first one didn't even have a name, Hoop is Introduction, like whatever that was on the fifth, the Incense Day. It was a collection challenge. It had the alternating hours of spawns between 11 and 5, Psychic Pokemon, and then Dark and Ghost Pokemon. For Psychic Pokemon, we had Execute, Jinx, Spoink, and Beldum. Uh, Ghost and Dark, we had Alolan Rattata, Poochiana, Duskull, Purloin, and others. Uh, we also had Double Transfer Candy the whole time, which is good. Um, Adam, did you play? Did you get a chance to like actually do any of this? Did you complete the challenge? Like, How was I it for you? I completed the challenge. I had time to play. I won't say I played the entire time because I definitely didn't, but I was able to complete everything. And it was it was just a weird, low key. Hey, here's a mythical. So did did you complete the the collection challenge like right away? No, I think I was missing a Jinx for the longest time, and it was one of really? the ones that I got on an incense. Interesting. Well, yeah, clearly it's an incense. Well, well I know that, but it's just yeah. I finished the thing right away. You know, obviously you needed the dark spawns. Some were psychic, some were dark and ghost. So you had to wait to at least the, the onset of the second hour to get like the Puchiana and the Sableye or whatever else you needed. But this is this is how it went for me. I started the day. I dropped six hours worth of items. So like lucky eggs star pieces and incense. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to fucking play. I finished the, the collection challenge like five, six minutes into the second hour of the event. And I don't know why, but the wind was taken out of my sails completely. As soon as I finished the collection challenge, I'm like, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. I was like, I don't know. I just lost all motivation. Like, I know you said you took a little bit longer, but when you finished the collection challenge, were you like, I'm good? Yeah, I mean, I still had the Go Plus going. Yeah. I mean, it was nice to, like, randomly catch a Galarian Ponyta. Because really? I was like, go- I was going through my stuff, and I was like, why do I have, like, 136 CP Galarian Ponyta? What? Yeah. That's crazy. That's How would crazy. that have been a hatch? They hatch at, like, 436 or something like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's, that's bizarre, but did... And and obviously you were running incense the whole time. You at least had the incense going with your yes. plus. Yep. Okay. All right. The I think we got one free incense from the what was it like a the special research. Oh, let's talk about the special research. Oh, so, what spe- what special research? Okay. <laughs> That's exactly it. So we talked about in the last episode. We were all fired up. We're like season long fucking special research. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be awesome. What they mean by special research is they give us one task for every, like, four or five days in the month. And it's like, I don't even know Ca- what the tasks are. It's like catch are. five Pokemon. It's like the, the second I, <laughs> I unlock kilometer. the next stop, it's already it's already complete. I'm like, it defaulted to be complete? Like, I didn't even know, I didn't even see what I had to do, and it's done. It's like my, fo- my phone falls off the nightstand. Uh, oh, you've completed your challenge. <laughs> You've walked a kilometer. <laughs> I've been drifting but, this whole time. No, so so the the collection challenge was was a little bit of a letdown for me. I just thought it was too short. Like I understand people have to get it done. You want them to be able to complete it in one cycle, meaning one of each spawn pool. Like you could do it if you were focused. I guess that spreads out for the casual player over a, a six hour period. Like, but and let, know, me, someone, let me ask this. If if someone did not like play during the incense day, did they not get Hoopa? No, because Hoopa was tied to the special research. Okay. So the the encounter with Hoopa was through the special research. It just happened to also count towards the collection challenge. So you can uh, always okay. get Hoopa, but you're only gonna get credit for the collection challenge catching Hoopa if you did it during that window. So oh, they, okay, they, okay, they lined okay. up, which was cool. I liked how they did it. But, yeah, it was, it, I don't know. The story was so quick. All of a sudden, it was like, before I knew it, I, I had a Hooper encounter in front of me. And I'm like, what the, what the, What happened here? I go, already? It, it was, was like just a, like, who done it? Who done it? Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand it. But whatever, I caught it, completed the challenge. And then I just, once I had Hoopa, once I had the, the challenge complete, I was like, I don't. I don't really care anymore. 
Yeah, that's that's pretty much how it felt. But this is an interesting spin. I I brought this up to Niantic. I said, I think that the the psychic spawns and the ghost and dark spawns didn't seem special enough because all the spawns that we've been dealing with in the last week have been new. New hemispherical spawns, new vanilla seasonal spawns. So, like, all these spawns were were new. So they give us new psychic and new dark, you know, not new meaning, like, fresh for the season. But they didn't stand out because everything we were dealing with up to that point in the last week was kind of fresh. Like, let's say the season was going on for two months and we, we knew what the seasonal vanilla spawns were. And then all of a sudden we got this psychic and dark pool thrown at us. It would seem more, di- it would seem different because we we're so used to the, the, the organic spawns here. Everything was new. So I just didn't think it had the impact. Oh, and the other thing I saw or heard was that, you know, this event didn't have a standalone blog post. It didn't have standalone in-game news. It, the, the whole event was tucked into the season of mischief blog post, which they ended up updating. So like when, when they first posted the, the blog, it had like a lot of blanks across the month. And then when the, you know, they wanted to release all the info, they plugged in what the, the hours of the incense were going to be. So it's like, you had to go back to this older blog post. Now, obviously we're different. We're in the know, but a lot of people told me they didn't even know this was fucking happening. They just happened to open the app and they were like, oh shit, incense day. <laughs> like, because they, they weren't prepared for it. I don't know if you got that vibe from your local community or heard that from anyone that like this kind of flew under the radar because. Yes, yes. You know, granted, once you turn the game on, you would see it in the today view. It would specify what hour you're in. The today view. The today view. But it didn't. I don't know. A lot of people said they were just like, oh, shit, I forgot about this. Another interesting thing, and the collection challenge went till 7 p.m. local time. Incense Day ended at 5 p.m. local time. So the spawns that you needed to complete the challenge, you couldn't get during the last two hours of the, of the collection challenge. So it was kind of Missed fucked. opportunity. Well, it left a lot of people scrambling because they're like, where the fuck am I going to find a Puchiena? A Puchiena may not be a natural spawn in your hemisphere or in the vanilla season of mischief pool. Oh, yeah. So people were left scrambled. That was kind of shitty. My only thought is that they did this because I heard a lot of blowback during the last collection challenge where people would collect the challenge, complete the challenge and not collect the rewards. Right. And then five o'clock hits and the whole collection challenge, including the rewards, is gone off to today view. Ugh. And they couldn't collect their shit. So maybe they stretched out that time to allow people to collect their their rewards, but two hours and then no spawns to, to coincide with it? I thought that was a little fucked up. I think this should have had, if nothing else, in-game news, but if they wanted people to really prepare for this, they, it should have had its own blog post, even if it was just like a, a short little tidbit. Yeah, I agree with that, 110%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We had the Psychic Spectacular just kicked off today, so we don't have much time behind the wheel. It's running till the 13th at 8 p.m. local time. We have Inke and its Evolution Malamar uh, making their debut. It comes with uh, the unique animation or the evolution mechanic. Have you evolved in Inke yet? I have not evolved it, but I have seen it on Twitter. Okay. Be 50 done. Candy. You got to flip your phone upside down, gyroscope style, to complete the, the evolution. Very, very cool. It ties directly back to the the lore of the Pokemon. It's the revolving Pokemon, the turnover Pokemon. And you had to do this in the Switch, on the Switch. You had to do it on the 3DS. So it's very, very cool. They brought that back and, and were able to implement that in, in Go. I thought that was really fucking cool. Plenty of Psychic Spawns, Abra, Gothita, Solosis, a bunch of others. Uh, the season-long special research, we kind of talked about that. It's a slow burn. It was a very slow burn. It's not what I was expecting at all. Like, I we we know better than anyone to like set low expectations, but this was wasn't even like a higher low expectation. I just didn't think it was going to be like this. Were you like left scratching your head because I was kind of like, wait, what happened? <laughs> what what's going on here? Yeah, 
I was confused. It was like one task. And then it tells you like <laughs> catch five check Pokemon. back. Yeah, check back at another time. Professor Willow's, you know, taking a shit. And it was just like <laughs> Can we just have that? Like like that he's he's in the camper right now. <laughs> uh, said, please do why, not disturb. Why is the Delia Ketchum comes out? Oh <laughs> I didn't see you there, trainer. Oh shit! It no, seems I, honestly, it seems Professor's research was not a uh, was not long it was, enough. It was inconclusive. Back to the lab. <laughs> Why is the lab shaking? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! No, but it, it's I don't know. I understand that it's going to be season long, but to me, this was a again. It should have, could have, would have tinfoil hat, whatever. This would be the perfect vessel for daily tasks. Like, yes, we get field research, but there's nothing that's tied to the calendar day, you know, like daily quests. So picture this as a season long thing. 30 days a month, you could have 100 and 120 days worth of fucking special research. Daily tasks. You don't have to complete them every day, but whether you do or not, the next day they get reset. I thought that would have been a great opportunity to do that. Not like, all right, do this one task and then come back in a couple days and do another one. So little let down from that little bit, not going to lie, you know, again, had, had no expectation, but this just wasn't it. Not good. Not bad. Not indifferent. Just, not yeah, it. it is strange that like, we just keep getting fed like a little bit by little bit. It just doesn't feel right. Just give us at least once a day. I like it's every morning I'll, I'll look and like get, you know, it's like the the check back later thing. It's but motherfucker, like really, come on, check just, back later. I said yes. It's just frustrating. Raids were also shook up. Lugias were in five stars. Yo, one stars. Staryu, Chimeco, Bronzor, and Esper and Inke. Yo, Staryu is the hot shit right now. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying for because I want that shiny really, really bad. So one star looks pretty good. In three star, we have Alolan Raichu, Wobbuffet, Metacham, and Metagross. And then Mega Slowbo, uh, Slowbro is currently in Mega Raids. But I know we've only had it for the day, Adam, but what are your thoughts on NK? Have you, like, are you catching a lot of them? Like, have you seen them? Like, I've caught the deal? probably, like, seven. Oh, that's way uh, more it, than it, me. I've yeah. only seen three. Well, it wasn't until I was on my way home where I saw the radar going, like, absolutely bonkers because every single spawn was, like, the shadow. Like, hey, go to this, this place. Oh, go to nice, this one. yeah. And I'm like, I'm doing a deposit. You're going to have to wait. <laughs> and then, like, and then after I caught that, the one, and it was, like, registered to the decks, all the others disappeared. So I was like, yeah, great. Yeah, now I don't that's... know which ones to go. Dude, that uh, Trainer Tips has talked about that before. That's a, that's... It would be better, and again, this is something that we'll bring up on these Niantic chats that we have, but you want people to explore? Like, let people have more agency after what Pokemon they want to hunt. Like, the fact that once you catch it, all those silhouettes go away, and now the, the, the nearby is filled with fucking Metapod and Caterpie again, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, it kind of... It, it takes away from the experience of a Pokemon being new. Like you should be able to pri prioritize Pokemon. I think that would be cool because that would help me explore. Oh shit. There's a fucking Inke down at the, uh, you know, at the fire hydrant or whatever, you know, it's like, yeah, I'll go all down at the moose. There's something I'll go walk and get it. Like that's, that's ex exploration encouraging. Yeah. That's, that's what I said yesterday. Uh, we were on, uh, we were doing the, the Twitch stream with Pokedads and, uh, I saw like I had seen a uh, Dino and it's like, if I wasn't, we weren't doing that stream. Like I would have ran and grabbed it because a Dino is not only stardust, but it's rare. And that it is the, one of the biggest motivators in this game is the rarity thing or the of, of evolved forms. Like that stuff will get people off their ass. Or if it was a deli bird, that would get me up. You know, Adam, if there was like a nearby to fucking Antarctica with a deli bird on it right now, you would be like, Put my I'd jacket be like, on. I'm I'm in my underwear, but let's go. <laughs> uh, what about raiding? I know you you were since even Palkia and Dialga, you've been chilled on raids. You could going after anything? Star you? I definitely want star use. I've been getting invited to a ton of like Mega Slowbro, but like let me tell you, since they've updated those little tasks with uh, the symbols of which Mega Stone it is, I stacked up three for Mega Slowbro because I think I only needed twenty. 
more candy to like mega evolve it or whatever for the first time yeah so i got it so i was like okay sweet and i've done like three mega raids since then just but people keep sending me them and then it's like there's two people in the in the lobby i'm like <laughs> peace yeah, out you and me are not gonna do this <laughs> so, so, I'm so sorry so sorry what about the special research like how would you have done this uh, I would have looked at it. I would have looked at it some more, and I would have said, "How do I extend this? How do I extend extend something simple, but make it?" It longer? could be any bullshit L- task. Literally, catch fifty any Pokemon. Bullshit. Give us fifty Pokeballs. Make me yeah. play the game a little bit longer, not like transfer ten Pokemon. Like, okay, I'm gonna. No, catch, yeah, I like that. I'm gonna like catch that. Pokemon anyway, and I'm gonna delete them anyway. So. Maybe delete a hundred Pokemon, like force me to have to catch a bunch. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I, you know, working up through to level fifty, I really enjoyed some of the, the level challenges because they really had high counts, catch five hundred or make five hundred excellent throws, like you know whatever it was, like those high grindy tasks were so fucking cool. I think catch fifty Pokemon is a perfect daily task. Like, that gets people... There, I'm sure there's plenty of people that turn the game on, they catch one or two Pokemon, and they're satisfied. Yeah, just to say that they caught something, you know? Just for the streak. Maybe if that's 10, or maybe if there's... Maybe they do, like, a, a tier Listen, thing. we're gonna come out with a t-shirt that says, I do it just for the streak. Just for the streak. We're going streaking! Oh, we also had Spoink Spotlight Hour yesterday with Double Catch Stardust. Did you play? Oh, I played. You know what I did? I set nope. an alarm five minutes beforehand. Wow. Is that for the Stardust? That was for the Stardust, baby. Did you star piece it? Oh, I star pieced it. I star okay. pieced it good. Any any shinies? Nope. No. No shiny no. piggies. I uh, I was at work, so I was just go plusing the whole time. Double catch Stardust you can't fuck with. You know, that's that's what the people want. Give the people what they want. They want Stardust. So I get it. I totally get it. All right. Next up, we got Safari Zones, Adam. Really excited about this. Ooh, the, the three tell me IRL more. Safari tell me more. Yep. The three IRL Safari Zones from 2020, we have Liverpool, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, have now been rescheduled. Uh, the City Explorer Pass portion of those events have been canceled. So if you ever did pay for that at some point, you will be refunded. Uh, first up, we have Liverpool. It takes place in Sefton Park. October 15th through the 17th. The The key art for this includes Relicanth and Unknown V, like Relicanth is the big one, Breaking Region. Uh, Philadelphia, which I'll definitely be there. Hopefully Adam will be. Ooh, Fairmont ooh. Park, October 29th through the 31st. Tough fucking weekend, man. It's Halloween. It's a very tough weekend. Very tough weekend to expect people to travel. Uh, the Philly event is Rufflet, Mr. Mime, and Unknown P. Uh, there's also going to be an additional snapshot surprise for Philly ticket holders. My guess is this due to, like, remember when Rufflet was supposed to be, like, the big deal for the Philly Safari Zone? And then they ended up releasing Rufflet in PvP or something, right? Remember? So it was like they took away from the event, and then the event got canceled anyway. So I don't know. They're making it up to us somehow with some kind of snapshot. I don't know what the fuck they're going to give us. Get, just give me more rufflet. I'll be fine with that. Uh, we have finally St. Louis. This is in Tower Grove Park on November 12th through the 14th. And note that the time here has been bumped up one hour from what it was originally. I don't know if that's because of daylight savings or whatever, but, you know, they want to save some daylight. So they're they're bumping it up an hour early. If you had early access passes and all that good stuff, that stuff will still carry over to your event experience. This can be played from anywhere. So if you travel to one of these locations or you play from your toilet, the experience is exactly the same in game. The only difference when you go to one of these events is going to be like the giveaways, the photo ops, the swag, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know. They have a couple cardboard fucking cutouts and be like, hey, there's our photo op <laughs> to take a picture of <laughs> Professor Willow cut out, you know. So that's probably all it's going to be in these physical locations. I mean, I just want to be with be with be with the peoples, yo. The people. Also, there are bonuses here. 
uh, exclusive field research and special research, eight hour long incense. That's totally awesome. Four hour lures and special 2K eggs. So I don't know what they're what the pool is going to be, but they're typically more rare Pokemon just uh, packed into the into the 2Ks. The like the event Pokemon. Like maybe you'll be able to get Relicanth from 2Ks in Liverpool. Who knows? Ooh. Adam, my question to you is: We just got done talking last week about COVID and the world constantly in a, in a state of flux, and we have to like you know adjust in real time. Like, do you think that we as people are ready for like in person events? I will definitely be wearing my mask. So, okay. I just you know it's just not worth the risk. It's not worth like seeing everybody. That's that's why I was vaccinated because I would like to eventually see everybody and be somewhat protected. Dude, have you, you seen know? some of these fucking concerts? Yeah, and like that's just it's insane, dude. <laughs> it's like it's so America. <laughs> like what the fuck? It's it is crazy. Now, it's like now the benefit of something like this, an open air event, right? We call it like an IRL event, whatever you want to call it, is you're, you're not at a concert. You're not standing elbow to elbow. It's literally going to be just like walking in the park. So you could have your immediate group. It's, it's going to be very easy to be socially distant if you were to go to any of these IRL events. You know, yeah, if they're giving out, you know, fucking t-shirts, I'm sure people are going to be crowded around. But walking around the park is going to be relative. You'll have the opportunity to be responsible, completely responsible and still enjoy the event fully, in my opinion. Right. Right. But that's assuming people are not fucking idiots. And we all know (laughs) there's a lot of idiots out there that don't care and are just complacent to the whole scenario. So it's definitely a tough conversation Especially when in the same breath, it's like, yeah, we want to do what's responsible. We want to take care of our trainers and all this. I understand the world has to go on. I just hope within the actual event geofence, right? Like, so Fairmont Park in Philadelphia. I hope they enforce guidelines because you're there for a paid event. That's why you have to RSVP. So... I hope they would be like, if you're playing in the park for Pokemon Go Fest, you got to wear a fucking mask. And if you don't wear a mask, get out of the park. I hope they do that. Yeah, I really, I hope they do something like that, too. That would be absolutely ideal for me. Like, it's not going to, my day will not be ruined if I have to wear a mask outside in the park. Give me a fucking break. So I hope they do something like that. But uh, all in all, I mean... There's a couple other, like, interesting topics here. No additional tickets being offered, not even for remote play. Now, think of the long haul here. This is a makeup event for a rescheduled event for this and that. We already got to play the makeup event at home. Do you think this is something they should have offered tickets for, or do you kind of understand why they're not? I understand why they're not, but I think people that I I think that they should have like an RSVP like hey we want to go and see how many people they they have that want to go and then mitigate that by saying like okay well only 50 lucky trainers will be you know sent an email code you know just to at least get to the the number of people that would just sign up like that that's like remember when Oh, yeah, the GoFest tickets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, okay. it was yeah, the Safari no. Zone tickets. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended okay. up, St. Louis got canceled, and they put out saying, you know, don't worry, you'll be able to still play from home, and everyone rushed to buy fucking Liverpool tickets, just sure as hell knowing they weren't going to Liverpool, but they yeah, just wanted you to- you do that? Well, we're different, Adam. We get the fucking access from Niantic. No, no, no. I know. I was just being. I was just being funny. I'm sorry. No, I didn't do that. I didn't. No, do that. I know but, you didn't. But like, weren't you booked for St. Louis? Like, we wanted to travel. Like, that was like in the cards yes. last yep. year. Like, we were gonna yep. go to all of them. So, it's just shitty. It just sucks. Um, but this is a. I I kind of understand why they're not offering additional tickets, 
because this is a makeup event for existing ticket holders. It's not a new event. Like, if the world didn't go to shit, this event would have already happened. Or if we didn't have any so many arguments about wearing masks at the beginning. <sighs> yeah, Adam. No, yeah, you're you're right, man. It's or just people like just you... stayed inside, or people just stopped going to <laughs> mega giant super <laughs> butt cheek to Lala, butt cheek Lala, concerts. Lollapalooza. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, come on. Oh, like, I literally shit. didn't go see my family in Florida because it was a hot spot. Well, yes, and this is another thing I wanted to talk to you about. You come into Philly, you would drive. It's not like you're flying, so you're not putting yourself through that ringer. Right. You know, it's it's just, you know, you have, that whole thing is avoided. So it'd be one thing if we said, all right, we're going to Liverpool and we're going to fly for fucking however many hours it takes to get there. But I don't know. All I know is on our Zoom call the other night, I brought the screen share up on, on the rooftop on the Zoom, fireplace and we got the most bomb ass fucking Airbnb. So I know I've told this story before. I'll, I'll tell it quickly. 2019 Go Fest, we had an amazing Airbnb, but it was in like the fucking ghetto, like real bad next to the murder park capital of Chicago. It was sketchy as shit, but the, the, the Airbnb was legit. So we find this Airbnb for Philly. It's three or four blocks from the park. Oh, I got to talk about how we found out where it was, too. And it's got a full rooftop lounge with a fire pit on the roof of this three-story building, right? It's so fucking awesome. Vault ceilings, loft style, hardwood floors, pimped out. Like, it is sexy. It's just awesome. And I'm like, yep, this is our spot. It's like $450 a night or something. I'm like, that's our spot. That's our spot. <laughs> and then we're like, wait, we got to find out where this is to make sure that, like, we're not going to get fucking murdered. Like, this could be, you know, Philly's no joke. So we had, like, the most amazing investigative forensic team on our Zoom looking at all the photos from the Airbnb. We had... We had the mobile ITC up looking at Pokestops on the Ingress Intel map. We had Google Maps up looking at satellite view photos, trying to find the house that had the rooftop lounge. <laughs> and so, you know, we're in the middle of it. And Jamal's like, wait a second. One of those Airbnb photos showed the street, the, the, the number, the house number. So then we took the house number and I started searching in Google Maps all the local streets to that area with that house number and looking at the street view. And sure as shit, we fucking found it. We found the place, like the actual address, because they don't tell you an Airbnb until you book it, the exact address. So I'm going down the street in Google Street View and like, believe me, the, this, they're, like, they're like brownstones in Philly. And these these where the Airbnb is is like immaculate, nouveau, fucking really awesome, like beautiful, beautiful everything. And like the next building over is like brick boarded up fucking hood rat shit. And I go down the street and it just gets progressively more ghetto. And I'm like, yo, this is our spot. <laughs> I was like, I love it. I go, I don't just hope my car doesn't get fucking jacked. But I was like, this is the spot. So it was so fun being on the Zoom. We tracked down this place. But, yo, party on the fucking roof? A couple blocks from the uh, from the park? What? What, dude? I am. I am very excited. I'm very excited. Adam, I'm you got to come. It. You got to come. Okay, okay. If, if you leave at, if you leave at 10 a.m. on Sunday to go home, you still be home for trick-or-treating. Because Sunday is Halloween. We'd be playing on Saturday. Okay. That works. So I originally was trying to plan a, a meetup, right? I called a couple local bars. They're they're not close to the park. They're like a mile and a half away from the park. I don't know if I want to go that far. I'm trying to find a spot. If anyone knows of any good spots that are by Fairmont Park, let us know. Because, you know. 
I, I, I would like to have a, a socially distant, responsible get together with the community. I think that that is in order if we're going to be going to an IRL event. Um, just fucking get vaxxed and wear your mask or stay the fuck home. Anyway, but uh, Adam, I think we got one more bit of news here. We've we've been kind of going a little bit. Uh, we got one more well, bit of news Well, I think it was before. you that was going a little bit. Oh, no, I'm definitely going, Adam. I'm definitely going a lot of it. <laughs> but I got one more one more bit of news here, and this one is uh, is interesting. I like when Niantic does this. They release the official patch notes for 0.219. This is a very diverse update. I like it. There's a lot of areas of the game that they cover it. Uh, note that on iOS, it won't say 0.219. It'll say 1.185. That's just the version in the App Store. But here's a breakdown. Uh, they have this with different, like, segments. The first one being features. and says, move the mysterious component collection notification to be a part of the battle rewards. So you know how, like, when you get a mysterious component, it has, like, its own little pop-up, like, whoop. You know, that thing. Yeah. Now it'll be like, the I guess, the, the in the same rewards as like when you're collecting XP or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Like the collection screen. I don't know where they're going to put it. But they're moving that. And this is already live. I've seen this. A visual update to the raid reward screen. It has like this this black and gray kind of chromatic. Almost looks like window blinds. It's really cool. Like Like slatted lines. Have you seen that when you beat a raid? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It looks sexy. That's nice. Next heading. Quality of life says battle party whoop, whoop, recommendations will now weigh a Pokemon's damage per second more heavily. This is huge. This is huge because constantly I get recommended Pokemon that have good defense or good resistance to the to the whoever you're fighting. So they put those Pokemon up front. It's like. Stop giving me fucking Gengar in position one. I don't care that it resists. It's a fucking glass can and I don't want it. So now DPS will be taken more heavily. That's good stuff. Uh, the time for XP notifications to display has been reduced. I assume they're talking about when you level up. Yeah, you know that, I think so. Yeah. Uh, improvements to German language text display. Okay. And trainers can save their trainer achievements card to their device multiple times. Okay. Okay. I don't really understand <laughs> that. Uh, I, I don't know if that's like the reward screen, like, you know, best dressed or whatever. You hit download once and it stops. You know, you can only do it once. Maybe you can do it multiple times. I don't know. Whatever it is. Here's some good stuff, though. Bug fixes within battles. Fixed an <laughs> issue causing remote raid invitations to persist after expiring. This is an annoying one, so I'm glad this is being addressed. Oh, here I was thinking they were just adding more bugs, like bug-type Pokemon. Larvesta for the win. Uh, fixed an issue where trainers are not offered a rematch after losing a Team Go Rocket battle. I have i don't remember I the last time that. I've lost, so I've never, you know. Oh, I lose I all the time. I don't lose, dude. <laughs> Listen, have you ever fought Cliff? Yeah. Yeah, you used to lose. Don't be talking I, there, like there, that. There was a time where I would lose a lot when I was trying to be good and creative and shit. Now I don't care. I just bring the big dogs. I just bring the recommended. Kyogre, fucking Mewtwo, Mewtwo. Give me two specked out different Mewtwo's. Uh, fixed an issue where the shading of sunglasses did not display properly in Go Battle League matches. What? <laughs> what? I'd never noticed this or heard anyone talk about it. Probably now that they're... They're heavily like watching all the PvP content and stuff. Yeah, like why? Why is that trainer's eyes glitching? <laughs> oh, it's their glasses getting. Are all they blinking? Up. Are they winking <laughs> at me? Pokedex fixed an issue where event Galarian Pokemon did not register in the event Pokedex. A lot of this stuff had bugs when they released all those those Dex tags. So this is just continued cleaning of that. The next uh, and final section is general says. Fixed an issue displaying the incorrect evolution for Umbreon and Espeon. We talked about this in the show where it's during the day and it would show Umbreon silhouette and it's during the night and it would show Espeon silhouette. Like, remember that during when you didn't have to walk during Eevee Community Day weekend? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been fucked up since then. That's fixed. 
uh, fixed an issue where trainers' daily Pokestop spin streaks will count if they attempt to spin a Pokestop, even if their bag is full. This doesn't seem like an issue. I guess people were able to spin the stop with the with a full bag and they would still get credit for the spin in their streak. And now you can't do that. It's kind of like reverse engineering. Fixed an issue where the new attack button appeared tappable when a trainer did not have enough Stardust. I got 13 million Stardust. I don't see this shit. So I haven't been faced with that. And then finally, fixed an issue where the map view would appear for one frame during an egg hatching animation. I actually noticed this where you would get like a blip of the map really quick. Like the dun, 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 the bloop. And it would just fucking blip to the map for like a millisecond, one frame, and then go back to the egg animation. So I actually have seen that. But I don't know. Anything on here jump out to you? Like, thank goodness that they fixed this. The sunglasses, for sure. Thank goodness, Adam. Thank God they fixed the sunglasses in Trainer Battles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, why don't we take a break when we come back? Uh, we've got a couple emails. We'll read through two emails. You know, one of them's a little bit longer. There was there was probably 10 emails. They're just shame on us for not getting through to the emails. They're just, you know, a lot of bitching about stuff that's already been resolved. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't have the dramatic effect that it should. But we come back, we'll read through a couple emails, and then we'll poke the bear. What do you say? Sounds wonderful. All right, we'll be back right after this. From our break. Thank you so much for that. From a break. <laughs> Adam, you're okay? Was your break okay? Uh, I didn't get as much H2O yeah as I wanted because you came back from the break all super jazzed without any warning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, now I'm trained. I have two cans of seltzer and two bottles of water in front of me right now. Like, I just fucking load up the table with drinks. Because I know. See I'm me. I have too many it. cards to not ha- put a drink with a cover on on the table with yeah, me. That's a little too sketchy. There's a lot of lot of potential damage there when you bump something over with your elbow. Yeah, but all of the uh, all the important stuff is uh, is put away or on the top level. So. All right. Well, a little housekeeping, really quick. This podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as a dollar a month. That one dollar will get you access to our patron exclusive discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And all patrons are eligible to take part in our monthly Pokemon Go and TCGO prize tournaments. Registration is in the discord. We hope to see you there. Huge shout out to our gym leader tier patrons. Absolutely Ryan, Dig Dug Rob, Grant, Jamal, JD Mojo, Jojo, Magikarp, Diem, Talon, Tish, TN Comics, Wiz, and Big Za Minus. Thank you all so incredibly much. Oh, we had some new patrons. Shout out to Conrad for joining at the Discord tier and Zachary for joining at the show supporter tier. Woo. Uh, listen, yeah, thank you guys so much. Listen to the end of the show to hear the rest of our show supporters. Thank you, everyone, for all your support on Patreon, especially Paul Bott, our executive producer, The Rock. Paul Bot, thank you so much. And if Patreon isn't your thing, there's still a couple other ways you can help us out. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. If you're listening on Spotify, you can follow us. If you're listening on Apple, you can leave us a review. All that good stuff. It all helps us in the long run. Thank you so much for uh, giving us, you know, some time on that stuff because it really does help. All right, Adam, I got I got some emails. You want to go through this first one? Uh, hmm. I'll go through this first one. All right. The the first one it was. A pre-September 1st announcement, but there's still enough points in here that carry forward. So I figured, you know, even though some of it might be outdated, it is still relevant. All right. This first one says, hi, I'm Rock Eddie. Love the show and just wanted to talk about what's happening in my region. My Pokemon Go ecosystem is all fucked up. So we've always had a spoofer problem in my region until we started a turf war with spoofers back in 2018, before seven to eight spoofers would hold about 60 to 100 gyms 24-7. There was a lot of problems with this, the main one being that players couldn't get their daily coins. A lot of players quit because of this. 
one month after we started a turf war, the hardcore players won and spoofers stopped taking the gyms they didn't need. There's actually a long story behind this. Now, because of recent events, a lot of hardcore players are con- constantly quitting or playing less and less, myself included. Because of this, we've been seeing more and more known spoofers take multiple gyms. I'm worried that we'll go back to spoofers controlling most of the gyms and more players will quit because they can't ever get their daily coins. The game has a lot of problems. The distant situation makes us feel like our opinions and gameplay doesn't matter. Niantic is killing the game off themselves. If it wasn't a Pokemon game, Niantic would have already killed the game off with their poor decision making. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on. let me backpedal just just a quick second. So obviously, he's saying this was pre September first, so they're talking about the si- the distance situation, uh, you know. And then he throws he throws a jab in at Niantic at the end. We'll include it, but just for just for posterity. <laughs> but Adam, when was the last time in your circles? You've heard about spoofers. I haven't heard anything, to be honest. So, locally, I haven't heard shit either. Like, I haven't heard anything about spoofers. However, online, I am hearing these pocket isolated stories of communities being, like, taken over again by spoofers. So, I don't know if this is... a uh, kind of a, a a symptom of Niantic's lax cheat control of the game or the fact that they're not looking at it anymore. I don't know. But I have heard online that the spoofers are starting to come back to the game. Spoofers that haven't been around. New software, new new like uh you know, everyone was using that big one that got plus. Would it go plus plus? Remember that? That was the the big one. And then they got they got the cease and desist and, and it helped a lot. But now new pieces of software are popping up. So, Rock Eddie, this is an interesting one. Like, I've never dealt with that. I mean, I've been in raids where I know that people are spoofing into the raids, but I've never been in a situation where gym control is being locked down by spoofers. That's got to be so fucking frustrating. Like, yeah, so the only time that that's ever really like happened to me was um, the cemetery for some reason. Because there was, like, a bunch of gyms all in one place. But now there's gyms everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, think about the scale he's talking about. 60 to 100 gyms. He could, he's probably talking about his whole downtown or his whole town. You yeah. Know, they're, they're taking over everything. So that 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 really sucks. Like, I don't know. Like, I've seen it where people have multiple accounts and they'll scrub your gym down. But they're not spoofing to it. They're there. They just happen to have fucking... 10 accounts, they look like fucking Elton John when they're playing, but then they have 10 accounts worth of berries that they could feed, you know what I mean? Like, they could stagger all their 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 efforts to scrape out Pokemon one at a time. Yeah. That being said, right, so I, I read that email. I wanted to include it. Now, check out this next email. This one, this was a little bit long. I'll get through it, but it's from Ryan. It says, Dear Ken and Adam, I'm a listener and trainer from the UK. I hope you are both well. I first started listening to the show a few years ago after hearing Ken on the Pokemon Go radio podcast. Shout out to PGR. I thought I'd write in and let you know why I'm pissed off with Niantic. Here it goes. A few years ago, a stop near my house turned into a gym, so I decided to walk to the gym, add a Pokemon, and within moments of adding it, I lost the gym. I couldn't see anyone around, so I battled it and took it back immediately and then lost the gym again. I couldn't see anyone, battled it and took it back immediately and lost the gym again. The gym is in the middle of nowhere, so you would be able to see if someone was around. Anyway, I gave up, walked off, came back uh, a day or so later, knocked a player off, and the same thing happened again. I lost the gym within moments. I started to get suspicious. I decided to start taking gyms more often, and no matter what time of day, I lost it within moments. Each time I did this, the player taking the gym back was adding the same Pokemon I had on the back of the gym, but the oh, shiny that sounds version. like something Ken did. <laughs> Guess he was flexing his collection over me. Ha ha ha. I've never done that, but that's that's a great troll. That's a great troll. Anyway, as time goes on, this player has become more and more well known in my local area for spoofing. The guy has two accounts that he uses, and there is just no beating him. 
There are 13 gyms in my area, and the guy controls them all. Or if he's not controlling them, they're neutral as he's knocked players off and left the gym blank. I'm at the point now where I don't even add or battle gyms in my local area as the player just takes them over instantly. Then I'm going days or weeks without earning coins. Every time I see the player spoofing, I'm reporting him to Niantic and hope that he finally gets banned. However, I've lost hope that this will ever happen. I have many screen recordings as proof. I even have a screenshot of the guy advising someone about a spoofing software. I honestly don't see the point of spoofing, and the game is called Pokemon Go. The clue is in the name. I thought I'd write in and suppose it's something a little different, but probably affects others in the community. Regards, Ryan. P.S. Love the show. Keep training trainers. So, two back-to-back emails about spoofers terrorizing a community. This fucking sucks. I hate this. Wow. That's ridiculous. Like, that sucks. That really sucks, because... What, what ends up happening is they'll be able to tell who owns the gym because they can use like bot scraping networks. So like the maps that tell you where your spawns are, are also scraping and reading gym data. So they can look at a map overlay with S twos. They can isolate just the Pokestops, just the gyms, and then actually see who's controlling what gym down to like clicking on the gym and seeing the Pokemon inside and how much CP they have left. Like you could see that from maps, from scrubbing maps. So he could just like have a filter on and if he's mystic, he's just like anytime a fucking Valor or Instinct gym goes up, he's going to see some color pop up on the map and he could just jump to it and take it out. And he was probably leaving the gym, the gym's gray because he already had 20 Pokemon in gyms. Think about that. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Dirty fucking spoofers. It sucks. I feel for anyone that's dealing with this. If you are dealing with it, let us know. I want to hear more stories about this. Like, how rampant is this? Because, again, I talk to a lot of people globally. I hear about it. But locally, I don't. So it's very interesting. I just like to hear from from more people. Like, is this is this happening more often? Or has this always been a thing? I would lose my shit. If I went to Red Bank one day to paint the town red and, and cover everything in Valor, and the second I turn my back, he gets taken out and no one's there, I would lose my shit. So, very, very interesting. All right, Adam, I think it's time that we uh, we do a little poking of the bear. Rawr, let's do it. I have a sound effect, Adam. Oh, you do? Yes, Shoot, I've been telling I you stop, this. For, i got to stop roaring. I've been now. telling you this for three years now, Adam. <laughs> it's been three cold hard it's years. It's been 84 years. Let's poke the bear. What are your feelings on the Pokemon Go app announcements made over the last week? Did they meet your hopes and expectations? Do you trust Niantic Labs to follow through? What was missing from their communication? We got some great feedback here, and it went about as I would expect it, you know, and we'll run through them now. Adam, you want to start with some of these? Okay. First one's coming from Jocelyn Blanchard. I'm going to remain optimistic. After hearing your recounts of the roundtable, I feel they were humbled and made acutely aware of their opportunities. I look forward to seeing what the next few months look like. Yay, optimism. Woo! Next one's from Justin Ray Fisher. Right now, they are just words. Actions must happen if they want to keep this great community on the same page. So this Actions one was speak louder than words. Yeah, well, th- this one is short and sweet, and a lot of people feel this way. That the entire September first response was hollow. They're just like it's just words. I you know I read it. Yikes! Right, a lot of people felt that way, and as we go through it, you'll get some more some more perspective on, on, on that same vibe. But keep going. Next one's from Biomech Designs. It's as expected. Didn't actually answer much. Only shows that they claim to have heard us, but it's if they actually listened. Go Battle League lag being one issue, but that is something many have reported over the last year or so to their so-called support here, here in the game. It's very difficult to not use this opportunity in this scenario to, like, pile on with other areas of the game that are shitty 
what all this was about over the last month was interaction distance and the rollback of the bonuses. There's plenty else wrong with the game. Whether it's ghost snapshot animations, whether it's a dull-ass raid in or gym system, whether it's go battle league lag, whatever it may be. But to be fair, what we're talking about here specifically is the announcements regarding the rollback of the bonuses, the interaction distance, and the incense effectiveness. So yeah, I feel you on the go battle league, but you know, we gotta stay on topic. Gotta stay on topic. Gotta stay on topic. Next one's from Wood Woes Wolf. Scaffolds for much of what Niantic Labs talked about already exist. Developer insights have been published before. The creator group has been around for years. I don't know if I 100% trust them to follow through. It's obvious. There's a lot of red tape. Internal leadership cultural hangups that have stifled these kinds of things in the past. The proof will be in what they do. Not just in the next few months, but in the years to come. I like that. Well, I like this a lot, and it, it it was an aha moment for me, because I'll be first to to say I got all fired up. Yay, roundtables. Yay, you know, internal talks. Yay, all that. And it's like, oh, shit. But, yeah, they've done dev diaries before. <laughs> the creator group has been around for years. Like, what the fuck? What's going to be different this time? So, yeah, it really does come down to, to what they do with it, right? Because... Yeah. Yeah. This, these things already have been in place. We, we we could we could you know beat the drum all day long at these meetings if they don't take what we say to heart. Hopefully now though things will be different. It's like I promise you have changed. <laughs> things will be different this time. I swear. All right, go to read one more and then I'll take over. One more, one more. Okay, this one's coming from Nathan. I'll keep my expectations low, considering these are the first steps towards making Pokemon Go better. I like the changes. I'll give Niantic that. But they gave a short yet simple message that still kept me skeptical about those changes. Like my dad always says, we'll play it by ear. We'll play it by or ear. I like that. Take year it slow. Or ear. I always heard like play it by ear. Well, ear, ear meaning like take it slow, right? Right. Yeah, we'll uh, play it I, by I, ear. The common theme we're seeing here is, yeah, it's words, right? This next one from Bad Bastiodon just simply says, actions speak louder than words. And it's very clear that even if people are not assholes about it, they still have exceptional reservation about it, which they're allowed to. Ni- they, a lot of people feel Niantic broke their trust, it failed them. So it's going to take time to rebuild that. And the only way Niantic is going to do that is with their actions. They can't just say everything's going to be okay or say they're going to take certain actions. I like the message. I like the announcements because it gave us concrete things to to, to latch on to, to hold them accountable against. I'd much rather have long-term solutions in place than short-term actions. I think that long-term solutions serve the trainer, serve the player base much better than like quick knee-jerk reactions. Oh, I don't like this. Change it today. Bam. Versus let's have meetings every two months and see how this goes. But I also will play devil's advocate to myself and be like, that only makes sense if they're actually going to take the action. Sure, we could have the meetings every fucking week, but if they don't take anything away from it, then what's the point? Then they're just doing it to say they had the meetings and not doing it to actually better the game. So I understand the skepticism and reservation in that regard. All right, next one. This one from Gayfar Daniel says, uh, I don't understand why they sort out people by not selling Safari Zone remote tickets. It makes no sense at all. So again, hard to stay on point, but yeah, emotions bleeding through. Dan, the wild bird man, I have apprehensive hope. I want things to change for the better. All right. I dig the optimism, but yes, be cautious. I, I've said it the whole time. I approach this whole situation with cautious optimism. Got to stay optimistic, but cautious. I'm not going to let them just I'm not just going to take their word for it. They got to show me this one from Phantom Dirac 96 training level 44. Five words. Actions speak louder than words. Other than that, I'm skeptical. 
All right. Consistent theme here. Consistent. Next one from Winston the Champ. I have mixed feelings. We asked to be heard and we were. I hope they are going to live up to the promise of more communication and we don't just end up in the same spot six months down the road. It felt like kind of a bland corporate canned response that I get from my bosses at work. <laughs> I Look, it's hard to dance around that. It's very hard to dance around that. I think the response that, you know, being written in the first person, being signed by Steve Wang, like I felt it a little bit more personal. I think the the message before September 1st, the response to the Pokemon Go community blog on Niantic, that one was filled with the corporate jargon. That one felt very like a boss, a boss's email. So I feel that Winston. Like a boss. Next one from Artemis Dragon says, I still don't trust Niantic, but I trust our community leaders. As long as they work with y'all, I am happy. P.S. Reopen the Safari Zone ticket sales. I and many others would like to participate. Uh, yes, I understand the Safari Zone thing. But look, all we could do is, ex- you know, the, the the best part about Niantic working with the creators now more than ever is they're giving us clearance to talk about it. Before, it was like mum's the word. They wouldn't let us talk about shit. So everything was cryptic. Now they're like, all right, let's have a meeting and when we're done, go ahead. You could discuss it. That's the big difference. So if we have a meeting with them and it goes like shit or have a meeting with them and we walk away not feeling good, we'll be able to tell you that without risk of breaking an NDA. All right. Uh, next, this is from Jiggly Dad says Niantic is on track to becoming A-R-E-A. They met my expectations, so they didn't even tickle my already low hopes. I do not trust the company that speaks values but acts upon money. What was missing was evidence that the month they had to listen, process and plan was well spent. Okay, I get that. Because a lot of people said, all right, that month of of August, that was like this brutal, slow trudge waiting for them to come up with a response. People felt, you had all month to come up with something and this is what you get this is what you give us. So a lot of people felt it just fell fell short. And Jiggly Dad saying here, like, yeah, it met my expectations, but my expectations were so low that <laughs> that didn't that doesn't really say much. Indigo 10235 says skeptic skeptic and neutral. Uh, yet yeah, he's answering my questions from the from the original post. Yes, because honestly, I was expecting a kind of bland and wordy answer. No, I'm sorry, but no. Meaning, do you trust them? Uh, and for a month of work from the, for the whole task force, maybe a more detailed or complete summary. Again, another another person saying like you had a whole month to put together something. It could have been a little bit more uh, fleshed out. And then one more, Adam, before I get your take on it. Alteria Ego says. Immediate action was good. Seems that the community talks played heavily into that. Long term, we have to see what actually gets the players through the dev diaries. Hoping for more of this is what we're working on implementing than expecting a this is what we worked on. This is a great point. This is a great point. And I want to see this too. I want to see the this is what we're working on in the future so that way they can be proactive to the community base or the creator base saying like, if you do this, this will happen. Like we've predicted this shit like fucking Kreskin, like perfectly. Like you go through with the reducing it to 40 meters. This is exactly what's going to happen. We could have all wrote a book and turned it in and all of us would have been right. So hopefully they say, hey, this is what we're working on. And we could tell them, you shouldn't do that because of this. And hopefully they listen <laughs> because the shit was very fucking predictable. But Adam, you've had some time now to sit on all this stuff. You've had some time behind the wheel playing back with the 80 meters. Where are you at? How do you feel about the grand scheme of things? Are you feeling confident with Niantic? I know you had some reservations last week. You felt like maybe you didn't get heard on the meeting. So where, where are you at today? I feel good. I feel better about everything. I really do. And is that because you've played the game? Has the game kind of be been self-serving to that effect? Yes. 
Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I, I mean, I feel that a lot because this is this is my 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 dopamine hit. You know what I mean? Like this is what the game is what makes me feel good. So yeah, when I do play, I do feel good. So the more I play, the better I feel. You know, simple as that. I'm fucking addicted. I got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Do you put your screen time report on? Uh, sometimes. I see mine is mine is biased because when I'm at my desk at work, I just have the game running. I'm not actively playing, but that shit is on. When I'm commuting, that shit is on. But yeah, you know, my my screen time's been been exceptionally high lately. <laughs> like 15, 16 hours a day. <laughs> oh, that's that's okay, right? I guess yes. I, I you know I'm nowhere near that for active screen time, but it, but it's high. But no, I, I'm I'm glad to hear that you're that you're feeling better. Honestly, dude, I am because it it it, it was making me feel sad that you weren't that you weren't with it a hundred percent. You know that you didn't have your heart in it. Uh, I I applaud you and I appreciate you for for sticking to your guns and being honest with yourself and with the community and not just yucking it up for the show. So I definitely appreciate that from you. But it's good to hear that uh, that you're feeling that you're feeling good again. Good again. That that's good stuff. Yeah, I mean, since since then, you know, I caught a uh, a shiny Relts. I caught a shiny uh, Geo dude the other day. That was pretty cool. Uh, what else did I get? Um, oh, I got a shadow hop it because I've just been telling myself I'm just going to attack every single rocket thing okay. that I see. Um, and it's worked out well so far because uh, I got the hop it and I purified it. It's 100%. So it's now a jump. Oh, fun. And I, and I, and it's, I, I literally caught every stunky, every gulpin, every, every possible. Oh, uh, for ditto hunting? Yeah, ghastly, and I've literally just and I'm like sitting there like waiting, and I'm like I'm waiting for it to say oh so I can like sc- get ready to screenshot it, and I kid you not, I've caught so many and I have yet to see a ditto. Dude, I haven't either. I go plus the ditto the other day, so I did have one in my inventory, but I haven't seen. There wasn't a single person in our Discord that posted a shiny. I'm like, where the fuck are these shinies? So if you got one, let us know. Info at LuredUp.com. Text it to us. Send us a video, whatever, voicemail, text 732-835-8639. You can check out PokemonProfessor.com for everything we have going on with the network. LuredUp.com for everything that's going on with the show. As promised, I did want to give a shout out to our show supporter to your patrons. Ace Trainers, Adrock, Alex, Andrew, Brian, Brittany, Chad, Carol, Chris, Cody, David, Eric, Garrett, G Stacks 87, Griggle 788, Harry, Heracross, Boss, James, Jason, J. Mackle, Justin, Canto, Cody, Ken, Lynchbot, Malcolm, MD, M. Pitts, Mike, Poking Nabot, Purple Pancakes, Ricky, Sam, Smeatwad, The Noise, and Woodwos Wolf. I'm so fortunate that this list is so long. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Really, uh, it means the world to us. Uh, but, Adam, that's uh, that's pretty much a show. You got anything else? or? No, that's that's pretty much everything. Is there anything I could do to to confirm you to to come to Philly by this Friday? Because that's when the Airbnb is getting locked in. Hmm. I don't know. Adam, I need you in Philly, dude. It's a it's a business trip. I want you to want me. You know you don't have to pay for the Airbnb, right? Yes, I am aware of this. <laughs> I could pay for your gas too. Okay, that might be different. Oh, there it is. There it is. This was a can financial I, I, thing. Wait, if it was a I financial get... thing, why did you just say that? Well, what about what about is my coffee paid for? I will buy you coffee all fucking weekend. Whatever I got to do, coffee wise. Yes, I'll bring Rook. Oh my gosh, that's that's it. That's all I need. All right, all right. Now you all go. Right, you sold me. Tell, yeah, I sold you. I got to sell T- Chanel now. Yeah. Tell Cassa to Cubone. <laughs> he's pumped. He already messaged me. He's like, yo, he, I'm down, dude. He's like, I yeah, got the green light. he already messaged me. <laughs> he's like, I got the green light. I'm in. I'm in. Red team, go. Red team, go. Jamal's like, yo, send me the fucking link. I, I got to show my wife. Oh, God. It's, we're in, dude. We're in. We're in. Okay. Magic Carpe Diem's like, he doesn't even have a ticket. He's like, yo, I'm st- I might still come. <laughs> oh, shit. 
so, so good. Uh, but thank you, everyone. We really do appreciate your support. Check out trainersdoinggood.com, our charity. Uh, we raised a couple hundred bucks for takethis.org. We're going to be releasing the VOD of the tournament tomorrow or Friday. So probably by the time you hear this podcast, you can check out our YouTube and listen, or you can watch along with our charity tournament highlights and uh, pick up some merch at trainersdoinggood.com. Support a, a fantastic charity and get some merch in the process. But Adam, I believe that in fact is everything. That's it. That's everything. Keep training, trainers. We'll see you next week. Thanks again. Thanks again.